Hello, welcome back to Worm Watts, where we harness the God-given power of compost worms to transform organic waste into amazing living fertilizer. Today we're back in our red wiggler bin, the Rachel bin, and that is the bin where we fed a coconut several weeks back and so now here we are looking into the bin to see how things are progressing and one of the first things that I notice is that we've got actually got the worms up into this upper tier where the leaf litter that we added to the top is. So that is really encouraging to see and there's another worm right over. So there are worms and they are making their way up. In fact, look at this one here. It's on top of the worm blanket. And we can watch it as it departs. It doesn't like being in the light. These are humble little critters. They don't want the limelight. They just want to poop and be on their way. And so this is the perfect environment for them to do that. So here we are. We've got all these other little decomposers <laughs> running off to their decomposing meetings, I guess. And look at that. And, oh, we've got an earwig. We haven't seen many of those. Wow, will you look here. Look at all these guys. They are having a uh, an absolute field day. And there, you can see it in the center of the screen, <laughs> is our coconut. But those two eyes, almost like they're peering back at you. And look at the worm there. We'll zoom in on that. So it is really nice to be back with the Red Wigglers and let's check out the coconut. Really excited to see this, see how things are going. And just from the look of it, I think that I can still see the reflection, at least the glint of some of the coconut water down inside of the coconut. So there's still some of that. Then we've got a lot of the eggshell there, which is helpful. And we've got worms. We've got a worm right there that was just, was just moving back. So I'm really excited that they are, they're right here. They are not far off. And you can see that the level of this, even the, the, the height at which the leaf litter was, has kind of come down to some degree, which is nice. And that's probably just due to the moisture and the gradual decomposition. So uh, it's just really neat to, to see what is going on. I love just enjoying this ecosystem and just the wonder of what God has made. Look at these guys. They're just all over the place. They've got so many things to do and they are doing an incredible job in here. Here was actually, I'm gonna peer closer here at the, at these eyes of the coconut and I just saw a what appeared to be a an isopod of some sort that seemed to be crawling near the eye of the coconut so I'm glad I'm hoping that they're getting in there that they're gonna get to the meat of the coconut I imagine that the flies have probably helped themselves to the meat of the coconut as well and so over time we do expect the the meat or the flesh of the coconut to kind of to kind of be gone and then we'd be left with the the shell and the decomposition of the shell which is really cool and i imagine we'd have a lot of critters actually 
smaller critters going inside of the coconut and then kind of working on it slowly like that. So really cool. I'm actually just seeing all of the activity here. Let me brighten this up a little bit. But seeing all of the activity here, I'm just gonna go ahead and dig down a little bit deeper beyond the upper leaf litter layer that we put down. And you can see a worm that just disappeared over there. And I just wanna see how everything in the bin is doing overall. Oh yeah, we got another worm right there. Some worms really like this corner here. They seem to be doing really well. And I'm just really happy with how well these these creatures are basically coexisting, if you will, and they're they're working together to decompose this. So I guess one of the critters that we don't usually spend a lot of time on and that honestly seems to move move away from the light very quickly is the earwig that we saw earlier and I imagine there are a good few of those in the bin but look at just the <laughs> we could basically call this the isopod bin given how many cell bugs are in here and they seem to be doing very well they seem to be thriving um, just glad to see that glad to see the worms doing well too so before we head out from here I'm going to go ahead and water the bin again. Just want to keep that moisture level up. And then I'm also going to add on a little bit more eggshell. Not a ton, but just a little bit more. So, but they are doing a fantastic job in here. I imagine that without adding any more brown materials, very soon we should start to see um, all of this, all of this leaf litter take on a, a much darker color. Um, oh look, we got a worm right there. And it is just working its way down. So, very cool. And honestly, given where this bin is, another reason that we opened up this bin to take a look at it actually is because I'm really hoping to take the the worms, uh, some of the worms from this bin and use them to seed a new bin that we've been working on, our leaf litter bin. And so just seeing how well they're thriving in this is, is really promising as well. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and water this bin and then uh, maybe tomorrow I'll go ahead and actually just uh, just go ahead and pull some of the worms from here and and transfer them over so that they can help us to start our our new our second red wiggler bin. So this would be the first time uh, we would be um, splitting the red wigglers and and adding on a new red wiggler bin, which is really really exciting for me. So very cool. Of course, we also love our European night crawlers, and I'm really excited to just see how both of those uh, types of compost worms do in these different environments as we give them different substrates and different conditions to navigate. I'm, I'm really excited to see how they do and to compare those and, and, uh, and show you what we find along the way. So thank you so much for watching. Oh, looky here. I just noticed a, <laughs> a worm here that just got a, it got walked over by this very busy, this very busy sow bug just walked right over the top of that worm there. <laughs> so yeah, all kinds of stuff going on in this bin. Like I mentioned, the, the isopods are doing a lot of work in here. It's basically sow bug city and the worms thankfully get to have a little bit of real estate toward the bottom of the bin, but we'll spray this down, like I mentioned, and then I'll add the eggshell and we'll be on our way. All right, so I've got my water sprayer and I'm gonna try to focus the spraying 
on the parts that are still kind of brown, like clearly brown in color. I think the sides, the edges of the bin that are darker and maybe more, they seem to be covered with a little bit more humus, more of the castings. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those ones, but I'll definitely spray down this part. And I don't think it needs a ton, but just a, a decent moistening. Oh, this side could looks like it could use a little bit more. So we are spraying that down. Again, nothing too heavy. This bin does do a good job of holding in the moisture, so I don't want to overdo it, but I just want to make sure that everything's able to stay moist. And again, by, by moistening the bin, one of the big benefits for our worms is that it allows them to more easily traverse to the top of the bin, as opposed to having a, a super dry top section. Awesome. So we've moistened that up pretty good. I'll moisten the top here. Look at the, look at all these guys. This is just incredible. So they're all fleeing from the water, but it'll be fine. Just a little casual spray to the top here. And now I'll just peel back the worm blanket one more time to add in the crushed eggshell. And then we'll peel back the other side. Give the worms some grit to help work through the items they'll be consuming. And that was our visit to the Rachel bin to see our red wigglers. I'm, I'm really, it was really neat seeing them, seeing how they're doing, <laughs> seeing how welcoming they are to their isopod buddies who have taken over. And uh, oh yeah, up here we've got our some of our other critters, we've got a spider there. So, yeah, I really, this bin is, oh wow, I wonder what this is. These could actually, right here, looks like that could be some eggs maybe for, from a black soldier fly. I don't know, but very curious to see what becomes of that. And one thing I will notice, I will note is that there are not actually a lot of flies in this bin. Now, that I don't I don't see all of the the pupa that we've seen in some of the other bins that we've looked at. And um, so, very interesting to note that, especially with the coconut in there, and the access that the flies can get to and get into that liquid. So, um, yeah. Very interesting to, to, to just wonder about why that is, but uh, I guess we'll leave that wonder for another day. Thanks for watching, <clears throat> and I look forward to hopefully tomorrow getting to transfer some of these guys to pioneer our new Red Wiggler bin. Thanks so much, and join us next time.